Hello, today we will take a look at how to synchronize the state from your custom movement component onto the other clients. Now, up until this point, we have really talked about and I have demonstrated on how to replicate states between the client and a server and between a server and a client using the server and client RPCs. However, what happens to the other clients that are connected to the server? So in this example, we have three players. One is the server that is over there and the other client that is standing next to me. Now you can see these names, uh, these overhead texts that I have created. Uh, they contain the display name of the object, its local role and its remote role. Now the local role is enumeration, which tells you whether this owner of this particular pawn is either the server or a client that is locally controlled, which would be autonomous proxy, or whether he is a simulated proxy. A simulated proxy is a client that is connected to the server that is not controlled by you. However, a simulated proxy can also be locally controlled from the server itself, as I am currently running a listen server. This isn't really uh, the case when you are running a dedicated server, of course. The remote role will tell you basically whether you are a client or a server, because on the server, the remote role would be simulated proxy and on the client it is reversed. So it is just telling you what your role is in relation to the remote role, which will, all, will always be uh, the server. So if you are a client, the remote role is authority or the server. And if you are a server, the remote role is, is the client, of course. Now, let's... I have added a feature. I have added this little jetpack onto the back of the mesh. And when I start jetpacking, you sort of see a fire coming out of it. it it's not very well uh, displayed, uh, but there it is. So if you, could, if you could notice, then on the other window, on the window to the left, uh, I am, or rather my proxy, that is on the other client named jetpack, uh, jetbp character underscore c underscore one uh, on the screen on the right the name is the same except on the zero at the end uh, this is the idea of the controller and for local client for locally controlled pawns the number is always zero so that is why uh, we are named or those two pawns are named reflexively in each sin uh, in both these instances so in the instance on the left uh, the guy on the right is called C1 and vice versa. It's a little bit confusing, but that, that's fine. If you observe the black character in the left screen, I'm not currently controlling the instance on the right. So now when I turn on jetpacking, you are able to see fire on his jetpack. And that is because I have set up synchronization uh, between the clients. Uh, now, in the server model that the Unreal Engine utilizes, clients are unable to talk to each other. Uh, this is because various security and even privacy considerations. This would only be possible in a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, networking model, which I'm not even sure Unreal Engine supports. So, how do I achieve this? Or rather, what was the situation before I set this up? Well, before I thought that Clients do not, or the autonomous uh, simulated uh, simulated proxies do not run, uh, do not simulate the custom movement modes. That is something that I speculated in the previous video about teleportation. That is why I set up the multicast playing of the sound because for for some reason it wouldn't play on the other client. Well, I have realized that the reason why that is is because these state variables, the set jetpacking. Uh, is not propagated to the other clients. So it is propagated to the server and it executes locally on a client. It does not execute on the neighboring clients that are not the one doing in control, not issuing the command. So the way to actually synchronize up all the clients is the same way I actually managed to get the sound to play. 
by using multicast. So I have created a new uh, RPC for each of the state setters. So now I have client set jetpacking, server set jetpacking, and multicast set jetpacking. And the way I utilize it is that whenever server set jetpacking is called from one of the clients, remember, set, uh, server set jetpacking is called whenever you, the controlling client does not have authority and is actually locally controlled. So only locally controlled clients can call this. Simulated proxies can never call this. Only autonomous proxies can call this. Autonomous proxies being locally controlled. That's the difference between simulated and uh, autonomous. So autonomous proxies can only call this. Uh, this only gets executed on the server. And subsequently, this multicast implementation gets executed immediately on the server and on each of the clients. So that way, every connected client is synced up their individual simulated proxies to the respective client that actually issued the command. So when player one uh, issues the set jetpacking command, this, get re this gets replicated to the server, it executes on the server, and this also executes on each of the client for the pawn corresponding to client one. So on client two, this code executes on client one spawn, which from his point of view would be a simulated proxy. If I don't do that, if I don't actually do this multicast, which is before it was just this, if you might remember, then after I build this, you might notice that there's no fire uh, produced at the jet. And also, if you can see in the client on the left, the client on the right is also some, is the one that I control, the client on the left lists out the jetpack resource and desired throttle of each of the pawns that are on, uh, that he has spawned on the map, the, sim the simulated proxies he has spawned on the map. So when I, when I start jetpacking, you can see that nobody's actually, none of the pawns actually have the desired throttle set to one and nobody's expending any resources. So you can see the state is not synchronized. You can see on the right that there is resources being drained in the second row from the top. You can see the desired throttle being set to one, but not on the left. It is so on the server, if I drag server over here, then you can see th these are synchronized. So the desired, the desired throttle is synchronized, the resources are synchronized for the most part, but not on the client on the left. The client on the left just keeps receiving updates from the server that he has no context for. He has no idea that the movement mode was set. He has no idea that the, jet, the desired throttle is set to one. He has no idea his resources are being spent as a consequence of not having the proper movement mode set. Now, this wouldn't be all that much of a problem. But for example, if you can see, uh, there is sort, sort of... In the client on the left, there is sort of a jittery motion. You can see in the server, the movement is somewhat smooth. In the client on the right, the movement is smooth, but the movement on the left client is weird and jittery. Now, the reason why that is, is because the moves themselves are not replicated. Like the, the moves that is saved in the playlist locally on the client for the purposes of uh, replaying after a correction, that is not something that is synchronized and replicated across all clients. The only thing that is replicated is movement. Movement mode is actually like the value of the movement mode is replicated. Rotation, location, and velocity. And based on these, the simulated proxies are running uh, the local simulation in trying to estimate where there are, where they are going to be or where there are in the meantime between server updates. And the reason the movement on the left is so jittery uh, is because while the movement mode is set correctly, and only the movement mode is set correctly because it is something that is being synchronized, if, if I think if I, if I can find this, I can find simulated tick. Over here you can see apply network movement mode. So you can, you can see from this line of code that indeed the simulated proxies are applying the correct movement mode, 
But what will happen if you don't have the proper state replicated, which you won't have if you don't multicast, because the, the move itself, the overridden F-saved move the structure, this structure over here, is not replicated. What happens, most likely, and what happens in my case, and will probably in your case, is this fails. Because I no longer want to jetpack, this is one of those conditions that uh, kicks me out of the mode and transitions into falling. So the custom movement mode implementation will run, contrary to what I said in my previous video, it will run, but only for a single frame, only for a single tick, after which, uh, or rather during which, this condition is immediately hit, the exit condition is immediately hit, and it's transitioned out into whatever transition you have set up in your custom movement mode. And that's why the inter uh, interpolated or simulated movement is so jittery in the client on the left. Because what is really happening is the client is simulating falling, given the state he has to work with, which is a state that immediately exits out of your custom movement mode and starts falling. But obviously that's not what's happening. Uh, well, what's not, is not what should be happening, because what should be happening is that I'm supposed to be rising, except the simulated proxy on the left keeps falling in between server updates that he receives as just location and velocity, which is evaluated correctly for a little while until the normal falling uh, movement implementation is applied and it, it, the gravity reduces or affects the velocity in such a way that it tries to fall just a little bit or doesn't rise exactly as is needed. So the way to remedy that is, of course, to enable this multicasting. Uh, and making sure that all of the clients are working with the same state and all of the clients are simulating, running the simulations on the simulated proxies correctly. So now that I have rebuilt it back with the multicast enabled, now if you watch the client on the left, I'm controlling the client on the right, if you can see the desired throttle and resources of specifically jetpack car C underscore one, you will be able to see the states synchronize. And you can also see the motion being uh, much more representative of what's actually supposed to be happening. And you can see the, uh, the flames coming out of the jets such as they are. I, I do, not have, do not have any assets handy to me that would be actually visually impressive. But you can see so some flames coming out of the uh, jet nozzle. As <laughs> it's just a cube. So uh, that's, I think that's most of it. It mostly corrects the video from yesterday, the video about teleportation, specifically the part about multiplying, uh, replicating sound, because this is also something that fixes that. The moment you replicate the wants to teleport and teleport destination to all of the clients, then of course the sound is played correctly as well. And you do not need to do additional massaging or handling or additional multicasting of any other state variables or any other functions. Now, the question that might be raised is whether it is not simply better to replicate the property, because so far what I have been doing is replicating function calls. What you can also do is replicating properties. And I'm not sure. Replicating properties works similarly, like replicating function calls. You still have the server replication, the client replication, which, which you know, from server to client and from server to client and from client to server. And of course, the multicast one. So you would have to be in this situation using the multicast, except for the, for the property. I'm not necessarily sure which is more performance uh, appropriate. I'm not sure which is more design pattern appropriate. So far, I, I just implemented it this way and I haven't seen really anyone else doing it any other way. The fact of the matter is, if you want the states to be properly synchronized, you have to use multicast because I think I saw the other video that, that I haven't been able to find actually, just by normally I had to have been, I had someone link it to me on extending the, the same topic that I work with, the extending custom movement component. And 
he specifically said, which is very odd to me, that he doesn't use multicast. If if I did, if I understood and heard him correctly, which is very odd to me because you have to use multicast to synchronize other clients between each between each other, because you wouldn't be able to then. Other clients wouldn't be aware of any special states of other clients. Something that isn't related to just movement, rotation, or velocity, or, or potentially movement mode. But you still need some kind of uh, exit conditions for that. You still would need some kind of state to determine when you want to exit out of that, that movement mode. Uh, potentially, though... That's not always that's not always necessary. There, there can be situations where you do not need specific uh, variables synchronized across all clients. Though looking quick, taking a quick look at the code, uh, there are, in, when you are running simulated proxies or this code on simulated proxies, you have to make sure something you have these checks, which is something I had to add just now because I noticed that it crashes on this line. Specifically because simulated proxies do not have a controller, this is null. So if I try calling set controller rotation, this, uh, this crashes with null reference exception. So you have to make sure your code is, uh, takes this into account. It works fine with get control rotation because uh, that is something that is stored on the pawn and replicated actually. At least insofar as uh, you are receiving updates from the server because again, this will not go is this this is not going to be smooth. This is just going to be somewhat choppy. One more thing I'd like to show off is how to connect up uh, events or changes from your C onto blueprints and do this by declaring a delegate uh, of desired throttle delegate uh, using this macro. Uh, this macro has several versions depending on how many params you want to assign to the delegate. Right now, right now I have two. Uh, then I declare this variable in here into the public uh, section. I use the name of the delegate that I have created here. This this can be this doesn't necessarily a first Visual Studio will complain to you that this is not a recognized identifier. Uh, the macro takes care of it, take care of this. It will just create a class somewhere. Uh, you will create the, the, the variable of that uh, class over here. Name your event appropriately, and use the U property uh, macro and add blueprint assignable. And what that ends up doing is. From then, you can create this bind event on jetpacking changed, like this. And based on that, I am setting the, uh, the jet uh, particle emitter to be turned on or off, depending on whether the tro throttle that I pass into. When I'm calling this event, and when I'm invoking this event, uh, speaking of which, I'm doing that in the exec implementation. So right here, checking if it is bound, and if it is, then I'm going to broadcast to everyone that is bound that on jetpacking has changed every time this exec is called. So that's a nice way that you can uh, bind the state of the jetpack to the state of the emitter being turned on and off. So that is everything for now. Uh, next, next up, I'm going to work on how to properly smooth out uh, the gliding for simulated proxies so that it doesn't look like a jittery stuttery mess like this yeah it's uh, not ideal yeah so uh, thanks for watching and goodbye